Okay, this episode shall give you a quick overview over the Cinema 4D user interface. We'll cover it in a kind of clockwise uh, rotation or direction. Um, so let's start on the upper left part here. So what you see here are the tabs for your project files. That's pretty straightforward. As soon as you save them, you can click the plus icon to create new files. When we go over here to the right side, you will see the different uh, layout options of Cinema 4D. You can create your own layouts. I will cover that in another video. But for now, um, yeah, you should probably stick to the standard one. And if later on you want to go to the modeling parts, you have a layout which is specifically designed to cover most of the modeling parts of Cinema 4D. In most cases, you will be fine with the standard version and later on we will set up our own Corona setup and you see nothing much is changing besides a few of those icons down here. There's also a startup layout which you can set um, so that it will automatically use this layout as the startup layout for Cinema 4D and this is basically the same as the Corona layout, it's just a separate thing you can define so that you don't have to switch to your self-made layout whenever you start Cinema 4D. The next row, this is like the main menu. This is where all the things basically are placed, um, which you will also find in other places in Cinema 4D. Um, I think I don't have to explain a main menu uh, too much. One thing you might um, find different in your version of Cinema 4D if you're using a Mac is that you don't find this menu right here on inside of Cinema 4D, but rather on the top of your um, menu bar in your Mac OS. You can change that if you go to Edit and then to Preferences, or you can use the shortcut Command E. And then right up here in the interface section, you will show uh, you will see this Show Mac menu bar thing or checkbox. And as soon as you deselect that and restart Cinema 4D, you will get this menu bar inside of Cinema 4D. This is purely a preference thing. Uh, I like it a bit more concise and a little bit smaller. So I put it in here inside of Cinema 4D. If you uh, like to keep the Apple thing and put it in the menu bar, that's of course also fine. Sometimes you see those yellow things and this is just if you are installed this version quite new and uh, it will indicate what kind of updates uh, there are inside of Cinema 4D in this particular version. So for example, if I go to Mesh, go to clone um, and then probably it, I don't know, it's probably because I don't have an object right now in my scene, but uh, yeah, it will highlight the things. I, you see the, the yellow button um, right here. So this symmetrize thing is new in the version 2023 of Cinema 4D. All right, then next in the row right here, you have kind of different options or settings you can use to change the behavior of Cinema 4D. Um, the only exception for this is basically this icon on the left corner here and the, this icon or button on the right corner here. This is something which is introduced in the last version of Cinema 4D, I guess, and it's something like a uh, contextual menu and you can open and close the, those things in order to save some space in your editor. So um, for example, this thing is more important. It's the material manager. And with the material manager, you can basically add materials to your scene because we're working with the Corona renderer. You should always go to Corona physical material, for example, if you want to create a phys physical material and um, you will see all your materials in here. But whenever you don't need materials when you're working in Cinema 4D, you can just close this kind of manager and then it will be out of your way. Speaking about managers, in Cinema 4D, all those windows basically are called managers. So we have the object manager, the attributes manager, the timeline manager, um, and so on and so on. But we cover those in a second. Let's get back to the, to the left side here. On the top left corner, you got the asset browser and the asset browser is basically a file system where you can load assets into your scene. That's quite handy. We'll have a, our own Corona asset browser. We will cover that also in another session. But um, for example, if you want to get some 3D objects in your scene for some food, for example, you can browse this library and just load it into your scene. The those parts, the X, Y, Z 
uh, buttons over here is just to uh, constrain some of your coordinate systems. Uh, don't worry about that too much. It's just if you have an object um, in your scene and you want to like deactivate one of those arrows, you can still move it as, as you see, but it will be um, constricted otherwise um, while locked this kind of thing. So you don't have to pay much attention for those buttons. The other one, however, it's quite important and that's the coordinate system switch. You can, or in basically in every 3D program, you have two different coordinate systems. You have the world coordinate system and the object coordinate system, or also called the local coordinate system. The default is the local or object coordinate system. And this is what you see right here. You see we have the green, the blue and the red axis on our object. And I can move this object also on a plane if I grab the thing between those, those arrows. And this is the normal behavior of um, Cinema 4D or of any local coordinate system. Now, I go to this toolbar here on the left and I select the rotation tool. And as you can see, I can rotate my object in space. And now if I go back to the move tool, you see the coordinate system of this object has moved or rotated accordingly. Now, if I switch to the world coordinate system, you can see that my axis is back to the default coordinate system. So basically the world coordinate system will always stay the same. This means that the up axis, the Y axis is always showing up. The Z axis is always showing like into the back of your scene and the X or X axis is always showing to the right of your scene. This is sometimes quite handy. So for example, if you have rotated your object and you still want to move it on one of those default axes, you can switch to the world coordinate system. But if you want to move it along the rotation axis of your object, you can go back to the local system. So, but sometimes it can be confusing. For example, also if you hit accidentally W on your keyboard, and you're wondering why the coordinate system always will stay the, the same, although you rotated your object, then have a look at this button over here. The next three buttons um, cover also a very important key concept of Cinema 4D, so pay attention on this part particularly. This is the switch buttons to change the, well, not the behavior, but the mode in which you're working in, in Cinema 4D. The default is the model, um, workspace more or less. So this is where you have access to your objects and you can move the objects around in their whole, um, yeah, wholeness more or less. So for example, this cube, I can move the cube around. Now the, the cube at the moment is what is called a parametric object. So it is this cube with, with, which has this kind of settings. It's 200 by 200 by 200 centimeters large. And however, I can change the mode or the, the behavior of this object and I can make it to a polygon object or also called, I can make it editable. So you find this button down here. So we have to switch here a little bit uh, to, to cover those, this thing or this concept. But you see this button down here and this means you will make this parametric object into a polygon object. So whenever you hover over a button, you also see the description and in the brackets, you can also see the shortcut. So I also can hit C on the keyboard and you see the icon changed from the cube to this kind of default polygon thing. And now if I'm still in the object mode, everything stays the same. I can still move the cube around. However, now if I switch to the surface mode, for example, I have access to the different surfaces of the object. So for example, I can make my cube a little bit longer. Uh, I can also access the edges of my cube, put that a little bit in, and I can also access the different points of my cube. So as you see, every object consists basically of surfaces, edges, and points. And these three buttons are basically the, the way to change in which kind of workspace you want to access your object. Um, if you add another cube to your scene, like the default parametric cube, you see as long as this object is parametric, we cannot access the point, the edge or the surface of this object. So we have to make it editable to gain the access to this kind of level of detail in our, in our scene or in our object. All right, so um, yeah, sometimes um, 
you're in a particular mode here and you're wondering why can't I move my cube? I want to move the cube around or my object around. Then you have to go to back to the model mode or object mode. This button to the right here, we can ignore this just for texturing. Um, and then this one is another quite important thing. This is the button to change the behavior of your coordinate system. Um, not to be confused with the change of the coordinate system, but this is basically to move the coordinate system without moving an object. So let's say we have our cube here and you see it's still rotated, that's fine. And if I grab one of those axes, I can move the object around. However, if I activate the, the coordinate button over here or enable axis as, it's, as it is called, you can see I can move the axis without moving the object. And this works for all, also for rotation, etc. But if I turn it off again, you see the axis stays at the same point in space. And now if I go to the rotation tool, you see that also the, um, the point of rotation, the axis of rotation has changed. And now this is basically the root coordinate system of this kind of object. Now there is also a way to reset your coordinate system. Um, you will find it under tools, axis, and then you have different kind of axis uh, commands you can use. Uh, the axis center will pop up a new window where you can define how you want to reposition your, your axis. Um, basically it's a tool to move it back to the center. So for example, I can say, I want it right in the middle of all points. So just in the center of everything. And as soon as, as you hit execute, you will find that your coordinate system of your object is back in the center of your object. So this is quite handy if you want to reset things. Again, it's under tools, axis, and there are also other commands you can check out to see how you can move the coordinate system around. Um, so the shortcut for this for this thing is the shortcut L and uh, later on you, we will also use other shortcuts which also use the L key and then it happens quite often that you accidentally activate this kind of thing. Um, so yeah, whenever you move the coordinate system and the object doesn't move along, probably it's because this kind of thing is activated. Now, the other things I only want to cover very briefly, we have a snapping system over here, which you can activate to snap objects in your scene or to the grid of your uh, work plane. Um, maybe I do another separate video on that. I don't want to cover this in this brief overview of the user interface. Then we have some symmetrize options. Uh, those are new, you have to check them out, how they work exactly. Um, and then we have what is called the soloing uh, viewport soloing function. With this, you can uh, solo different options uh, objects in your scene. So this is only like important if you have different or more objects in your scene and you want to concentrate, for example, on a particular one. Let's say we want to focus on cube two. So I can hit this little eye icon over here and then the cube two will be soloed in my viewport and I only see this cube. And as soon as I deactivate this button, I see all the rest again. And the button next to this are some more options for this kind of thing. So you can activate also the automatic function so you don't have to hit this button again whenever you change something or select a new object in your scene. And then also the hierarchy thing is useful if you uh, want to see all other objects which are a hierarchy below in your object manager. We cover the hierarchy thing in a second. One last step here for this upper row. Um, those are the render settings or the render functions. So with this two buttons on the left, you can render your image, but probably you can forget about those because we're using what is called the virtual frame buffer of Corona renderer. Uh, there's a separate button down here. Uh, you see it looks quite similar, but this is this kind of take from, uh, from the movie thing and this is the the preview of the virtual frame buffer um, this looks like this and the virtual frame buffer is basically a thing where we render all our images in corona so um, the only important button over here is probably the settings button this is where you change the render settings and the first thing you can do when you start up and want to use corona is change the renderer here in the corona settings but all the other stuff we will um, yeah, discuss in another session. 
Okay, so, um, well, this is the the upper part. Now let's cover the viewport here shortly before we head over to the managers here on the right side and also this kind of um, toolbar in between. Now the viewport is probably the most important thing in your work with Cinema 4D. This is where all the, the magic kind of happens. This is where you set up your scene and to move around in your scene you basically have well, three different options. You can pan the camera, you can zoom in and zoom out, and you can orbit the camera. So just click and hold your mouse button down and move the mouse in order to activate those options. You can also use the one, two, and three key on your keyboard to do the exact same thing. So three would be orbiting, two would be zooming, and one would be panning around. For the orbit, um, it basically, um, yeah, uses something like, like a center point of your scene to orbit around. Um, but you can also use your mouse a little bit to define which point you want to orbit around. But um, yeah, you have to get a hang out of it. It's just uh, learning by doing, I guess. The menu up here is just for the settings of this kind of viewport. Uh, so for example, you can change the camera position. You can say that you want to see the scene from the left or from the bottom and you find a little notification of over here indicating in which perspective you are. The default is the perspective perspective. And uh, other than that, uh, you see we don't have any other cameras in our scene. So this is empty, but you see that we have a default camera and we have a default camera because without the default camera, you wouldn't see anything. So this is the, like the, yeah, like the name says, a default camera. And this is the camera we're using right now. You have some display functions. For example, you could also show the edges of your objects. Those black edges which appearing right now is used or is um, activated by using the grout shading with the lines option. Default is the, just the grout shading. Grout is just the inventor of the shading of those objects. Um, it's shaded in order to see that we have different faces of the surface. So if I go to the constant shading, you see that uh, we don't can uh, like differentiate between the different surfaces on our objects. Um, and yeah, the grout guy was the guy who invented this kind of behavior of shading different angled surfaces. Um, yeah, the other stuff is um, not too important. Maybe the filter, this is just useful if you want to filter certain things in your editor view and your view in viewport. The most common one I like to deactivate is the work plane uh, just to get rid of this crit in my scene. Sometimes it's a bit in the way, but uh, other than that, all the other filters you probably only need uh, a bit later on in your journey in some 4D. Another thing to talk about when using uh, the viewport is, uh, especially when you are on a Windows machine and have a mouse with a middle mouse button, then you can activate the, the toggle for this viewport, but you can also activate it by clicking this icon on the top right of this uh, viewport window. And this will activate like a separated view of your viewport and with this you have different angles covering the different windows here. So if we have, for example, we have a front view, we have a top view and we have a right view and sometimes this is quite handy if you want to check out your scene or get a better picture of your scene to have this kind of orthogonal view of your scene and also uh, what's done here is in the in the display settings by default it just shows the lines of your object so you can change that of course if you like you can also put this to grout shading to get that um, back and yeah but the default is the lines mode now what happens sometimes uh, and which confuses new users is that if you have hit the middle mouse key again or use this this button down here you will actually scale up this particular view um, of the of the viewport split screen um, yeah so if you want to go back to your default perspective view use this button over here this is the one which will scale up your default viewport again the other ones will basically just scale up the other perspectives um, so yeah that that can be confusing once in a while 
Okay, let's head on. Um, the vertical menu you see here, and it just switched back to the standard, so it looks more like the one you have in front of you. Those are basically just the quick menu to access all the different objects you can place in your scene, as you saw before. Uh, we got this uh, parametric object, and if you click and hold your mouse, you are able to get an extra menu where you find more objects. So whenever you have this little triangle in the bottom right corner, you basically can click and hold your mouse to get more objects or more functions out of this menu. So for example, I can also add a sphere to my scene. Um, yeah, we don't cover all the different ones for now. Basically the blue ones are geometric objects. The green ones are you could call them like more functional tools. They're not objects by themselves, but they can manipulate your objects or copy or clone your objects. Then we have the the like the violet ones, which are more like uh, modifiers to your objects. With those, you can modify the behavior or the form of your objects. Then we have fields, which is another topic by itself. And then we have some scene objects like uh, a sky map, a camera, lights, and then last but not least, we have this make editable button to make the parametric objects into polygon objects. Then here on the right part, we have the objects manager. This is where all your objects will be placed. Um, there's nothing too much special about that besides that you, of course, can also use copy and paste commands. You can hold down the command key to make copies and this button over here might be interesting. This is a so-called null object. And as you can see, this is an object which doesn't have any geometry in it. It's just like an empty point in space, but we can use it to group objects together. So for example, I can put all my spheres in the null and call this spheres. And by this, um, all the spheres will be, and I have to pull them out here to see that there are three of them. Um, will be grouped together and as you can see if I'm clicking on the spheres group object up here and I will move them around and all of the child objects of this parent object will follow along. And you can, this hierarchy thing you can also do with any object. So for example I can also put the cube in the sphere and then um, if I move the spheres group then the cube will move along because it's a child of the sphere. So for example, then if I only move the sphere around, you see the cube will follow along. Um, inside the objects manager, you have those kind of uh, check marks. This is just to deactivate or activate the object or the function of the object. And to the left of this, you have what is, or what I like to call traffic lights. So if you click on one of those circles, uh, you see that the first time you click on it, you get a green indicator and the next time you click on it you get the red indicator and as you saw here the sphere disappeared uh, as soon as this traffic line turns red. So what you can do with this is you can hide or show different objects in your scene with this system and we have two of those because we can separate between what I like to see in the editor and what I like to see in the renderer. So for example with the sphere one I can say I don't want to see this object in my editor, but later on in the rendering, I want to still see it. So I just keep that um, lower indicator uh, by its defaults in, in the gray position. Um, why, do we have, why do we have a green light? We have a green light because we can override settings with this. So for example, if I say I want to hide this uh, sphere and cube, I can turn the red light on for the viewport with the upper um, indicator. But if I still want to see the cube here in my viewport, I can turn on the green light and then the green light will override the red one. That's why we have the green option. So this is basically to override settings down the line. Basically cinema behaves in that way. The um, cinema will like go from the top to the bottom and then from the from the left to the right. So um, work-wise, basically, yeah, it just goes from the top to the bottom and from the left to the right. So um, whenever you have something 
lined up here in the object manager um, you can keep that in mind but um, yeah you don't have to pay too much attention for this it's just in some particular cases um, important to to keep um, notice about the hierarchy and the order of things then um, to the left of this indicator light we have a layer system you can add things to new layers um, and then they get this kind of color and I talk about that in a second and then we have the um, tags the tags are again something like modifiers you can use in order to modify your objects even further um, and we cover some of them also in a different video let's have a look at the bottom manager and that's the attributes manager and the attrib attributes manager is basically like settings of the thing you have currently selected so for example if i have the sphere selected as a parametric object you can see i have different parameters i can change you see that it's still quite polonic um, quite edgy so um, yeah if i increase for example the segments you see it gets a little bit smoother around the edges so depending which object or tool you have selected this attributes window will change sometimes you want to save the this kind of or lock rather the, the the screen here or the manager and you can use the lock for that so for example if i want to keep the parameters of the brush selection tool i can lock that and then as soon as i click something else this will stay the same and then i can unlock that again and by that uh, i have access again to the different settings so it will always switch to the last thing you clicked on so if i clicked on the move tool you will see the settings of the move tool if i click on an object here in the object hierarchy it will switch to this kind of setting and yeah so let's go to layers uh it's the tab next to the attributes and the layer system is a system to keep things tidy and organized again we just want to cover that really briefly so i could call this layer for example um, my sphere layer and then i can put all the spheres to this kind of layer and a neat thing now is we have different options here for each layer so for example you can single them and then you will only see the objects which are on this layer you can make them invisible you can define if you want to see them in your hierarchy by using the object manager uh, deactivation button over here you can lock them so that you don't have access to them and so on and so on and you can make as many layers as you wish to and then put the objects in those kind of layer systems so it's basically just a thing to keep things nice and tidy um, you will also find the takes tab over here um, but this is also something for another session because it's uh, too complicated to demonstrate you just yet just for now um, so let's go to the bottom here this is the timeline manager um, it's basically to animate things and it's more more or less like a preview of your timeline so that's just to give you the most important tools and options for animating and you find another window down here uh, an access to an, another settings thing and this is like the timeline manager and this is where then you have more access to your whole timeline functionalities again this is something which would uh, which would go too far for the user interface and we are also almost at the half an hour mark so quickly the menu on the left side this is basically a tools menu you find different tools depending in which mode you are so for example if i switch to the modeling uh, to the polygon mode you see i get access to some model tools um, not really they're grayed out but that's because i haven't selected a polygonal object as you can see now uh, i get access to modeling tools for example i can extrude this surface to the inner then ex select the extrude tool and extrude that out so yeah so we get access to different kind of tools depending on which mode we are in the default behavior here is uh, on the top you have selection tools like the brush selection or rectangle selection tools um, and then you have the move tool the rotate tool the scale tool and then you have some placement tools which you can use to place um, objects on 
each other. So for example, I can place this cube on the other cube or I select this cube and place this cube on top of that. So it kind of uh, recognizes the shapes of your objects and you can use it to place things more easily in your 3D scene. Um, yeah. All right, I think that's enough for the user interface. Um, yeah, just uh, to give you a quick head, heads up and start yeah, on how the user interface is built up inside of Cinema 4D.